let's go ahead, dive in and break into what virtual network architecture actually means, what it looks like, and what we could ultimately think that we're gonna get out of it. So I have three tabs for both Azure and AWS, and we're gonna go through a few different scenarios here. We're gonna go over Azure first, and then we'll go ahead and we'll go over AWS. Now, starting from the left to the right, as you can see, this is very much a hybrid environment. So we got some on-prem stuff, and then we got an Azure virtual network. So first we have Windows Admin Center, and if you're not familiar with Windows Admin Center, you can kind of think about it like a centralized location to manage servers. So it's literally a piece of software that you connect to all of your you know, Windows servers, for example, and you're able to manage them all in one place. And then you have your deployment and then you have an Azure network adapter. Now, how do you connect those two? Well, the Azure network adapter could be a few things. It could be a gateway. It could be, you know, maybe something like Azure Stack HCI if you're diving into that. But think about it really just, you know, like some type of adapter. Now, moving over to the right side, we have the actual Azure virtual network. So as you can see, from the Azure network adapter to the virtual network gateway, that's how that communication is going inbound and outbound. You know, we got an arrow going both ways, but it is going into that virtual network gateway. And then from that virtual network gateway, it could go into say your production subnet or your dev subnet or your UAT subnet, really whatever you want. You have that network security group there and that's really like your firewall rules. And then from there, you are pushing out traffic to virtual machine one, virtual machine two, virtual machine three. And then you could even have that Azure Bastion subnet set up with, again, that network security group, which is just firewall rules. Think about it like firewall rules. Now, if I go ahead and I scroll down here, we can see something a little bit more complicated. Let me just, oops, zooming in isn't going to help, but hopefully you should be able to see that. And again, same thing, but a little bit, you know, adding the branch office and the other cloud provider. So as you can see, we just scroll up here. We had the virtual network, and then we also had the on-premise network, but scrolling down, we have the virtual network, the on-premise network, and the branch office. So again, remember in the first video, I was saying how when you're connecting hybrid to the cloud, it's kind of like, you know, how you would be connecting from a WAN perspective of like different offices, same rules kind of apply here. So you got your branch office, and you're connecting via corporate WAN, and then you also could even add in another cloud provider. And Here's the other thing, and really the, the reality that we're living in now is a lot of organizations maybe aren't using just one cloud provider. They might be using Azure and AWS. And because of that, you could also connect Azure and AWS. So like when you do VPC peering, for example, you could connect you know, uh, an Azure network to an AWS network. They don't really care where they're sitting. The, you know, AWS doesn't say, oh, this is Azure, let's cut this off type of thing. No, nah, it doesn't work like that. Now going over to another network architecture here, this is pretty basic, but this covers like the data center network and how that's constructed at different tiers. So, you know, you got your WAN there, your wide area network, and then you have your regional gateways and you got your data center and you got different tiers for your data center. Now it's just, this is very basic. This is just talking about, you know, if we're saying one data center to Azure, for example. And then we also have some secure environments. So again, you know, <laughs> we have some secure environments, but obviously all of your environments should be secure. But this is kind of going into it a little bit more where, you know, you have your on-premise network on the left, and then you got maybe a VPN connection, your virtual network gateway, that's going through some type of IPsec tunnel. And then you have your hub virtual network. So, you know, you got your Azure firewall there, for example, and that's pushing in and allowing X amount of ports, X amount of traffic, et cetera. And then it's going to your spoke virtual network, which again, that could be your production environment. That could be your UAT dev environment. And it's pushing the traffic from the Azure firewall to your subnets, which in turn is pushing that traffic to your virtual machines. And now in that peered virtual network area here, I want to point out that there's also Azure monitor. And I want you to think about Azure Monitor like any other type of monitoring software, except, you know, in this case, it's monitoring all of the traffic, applications, resources, et cetera, inside of Azure. And this is a really good place that you can monitor your networks. So now let's jump over to AWS. So now from an AWS standpoint, what we're talking about here is if you have multiple AWS accounts. So actually, you know what? 
we're going to go back to that one. Let's actually start with this one. So let's say we're thinking about, again, from a hybrid perspective, you have offices and then you have your AWS account. Well, in this case, you could set up AWS Managed VPN, for example. So right in the middle, we have our internet, we have our VPN connection, and then we're going from the customer's remote network to an Amazon VPC. Now remember, what is a VPC? It's pretty much like a virtual data center. It's a virtual data center running inside of Azure. Now moving over here a bit, this is really when we're talking about, you know, we have multiple AWS accounts. So as you can see, we have core accounts, we have multiple accounts, we have multiple VPCs, we have the AWS test account, the dev accounts, the product accounts. And by the way, this is very realistic for a lot of organizations. A lot of organizations have multiple AWS accounts for, you know, testing and dev and production and all that good stuff. Because in Azure, we have subscriptions and you could kind of manage that from one location, from one Azure portal, you can manage multiple subscriptions. With AWS, it's not exactly like that. So you do have to have multiple accounts and you have multiple VPCs. And because of that, with our multiple VPCs, as we can see on the right, right over here, it can then connect to all of the different networking. So you might have transit gateways, VPC endpoints, VPC peering, all of that good stuff. And then finally, as we can see right here, it goes down to your on-premise network for your hybrid environment and you have your customer gateway there. So as you can see, like if we're if we're looking at this and then we go back to say this, it seems a little bit easier. And we'll be able to see that, but you know, again, just thinking about it from an architecture perspective, it is a little bit more straightforward. Now, <laughs> pulling in the big guns here, this looks a little bit complex, but it's not all that bad. Really what this is showing is, you know, you have an AWS region, you have availability zones. Those availability zones are like US East 1A, US East 1B. And then within each availability zone, you have your public subnets and you have your private subnets like we can see on the left here. And then they encompass multiple different aspects of AWS. So all in all, you have your internet gateway here, but maybe you have some Elastic IPs. Maybe you have a NAT gateway, NAT instance. Then you have your public subnet, and then you have a few different IP addresses that you can use in there. So when you're thinking about architecture in AWS from a networking standpoint and in Azure, yeah, it could definitely get complicated. But kind of what I wanted to show here is, it's pretty much the same as you know when we're running things on prem. We have routers, and we have switches, and we have gateways, and we have all that good stuff. And in the cloud, it is the same. It's just more virtualized.